Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Tuesday the 13th of February. It's quarter to seven in the morning. Just got down to Gorston Pier. Just halfway through setting up. Just got one lot out with uh, some blue ocean. We bring that in because it's pulling hard. We've got the Shakespeare Salt, 7,000 wheel. Bought uh, 45 pound each giant Hercules braid. 70 pound. Shock leader and a simple 2 0 pulley pedal with three, uh, three uh, great holder hooks. And it's got a big bit of uh, bluey and squid wrap on there. I'm going to bring that in because it's push, pushing hard today. But uh, I'm I've got three up flapper, I've got two up, one down, I'm not even baiting it or we'll cast it in yet or anything. I'm just, uh, it's a lumpy sea today. I've only got one rod set up at the minute, the other one's there just ready to get baited. It's a fair pull on it today, but I've got a big bit of bluey and squid wrap on there with two 3 -oh panel hooks on a pulley panel. Well, I'm going to get finished setting, set it up. Well, I just bought that left hand mod in with the uh, bluey and squid wrap because it had a bit of a slack liner but there's two or three of them on. So I'm going to keep them, do the bait for later on. The three people have been down already this morning and said oh it looks right today and I know what they mean, it's got a nice sloppy seat. It's not crashing and banging. Um, straight in your face, the wind, or the seat is, the wind's coming off the low. But it's rolling straight in and it's just a nice nice wobble, nice sloppy sea today. But uh, setting up behind there. There's a little breath of wind behind there. As soon as you get out here on the end, that wind's raw. But I'm gonna get this cast back out again and I'll get this uh, I'll show you through this other wobble. Straight through the middle and tip with a bit of squid. And it's 
to see if it works, see if any, anything uh, was a bit of a protein, you never know. Even, even if it's a little white and all, you never know. Just gonna try it, just for a cast or two. And if not, I've got um, I've got the usual suspects. really deep over there and it's quite snaggy as well but I'll get that other one out let's we'll see if we get anything on the uh, old magwars and the lobworms let's have a see let's have a play around eh okay it's half past seven it was low tide it's supposed to be about 20 past five half past five but uh, 20 past seven now when I was got here it's still pulling quite sharply left to right but about well slack water now we're bang on slack water give it too long with this or what I'll do is they always say don't change everything all at once because you never know what's going to work or not always just change one thing at a time so before we take the magnets off I don't, I don't think they're going to work they might do for us like in rocks and um, near the well I suppose we are near the shore but in like a rocky area or if there's any sort of like sea bream or smaller fish like that, grass and stuff. But off off the pier, you know, I'm not holding out. So I'll probably change the magnets. Put a bit of mackerel and uh, squid on the top one. 
carry on with the lob worms on the other two. If you're not getting one, then I'll probably change the lob worm again to a different bait with a prawn. I'll just see what, what works. Um, see what gets the reaction. And that way I can sort of like then put all my eggs in one basket. But... Okay, I'm going to clear all this mess up. Grab myself a coffee. Sit back, relax, and uh, hopefully come back for fish. Even a whiting would do at the minute. But it just looks right, it feels right. Could be wrong. We just had two crabs, which is uh, a bit ominous. <laughs> but staying positive. I just chucked a couple of handfuls of uh, maggots down here on the side. I don't know, one thing or the birds like them. They want free uh, They think, what the hell these are doing here? These maggots doing on the end of the pier. <laughs> I'll have them. I'll have them fight him over them in a minute. They... Something different for them, isn't it? Well, he seems to like it. I think I'm going to put my uh, Assassin's Creed dude on in a minute. Fantastic looking morning. Wind you up a bit. Just keeping an eye on this rod. The tide is starting to turn. It's now sort of pushing right to left. So we'll be ever so slightly on the flood. A minute ago these were all the lines were laying completely flat. Now it's just starting to turn. Six ounce leads on. And normally with a decent uptide cast um, it holds, but I've got seven and eight ounces. We've got a stiff breeze. Come on, let's have a bite. The tide's starting to turn now, so I just thought I'd bring it in and just check the bait and have a recast and cast to the right, so I'm up tied in it, but all the bait's gone, it's got tiny little bits of uh, squid left there. I didn't see any bites, but uh, the worms are gone, the maggots are gone, so I'm trying it again. I'm not losing any expensive bait. So, but now it's starting to turn, and there's a bit of a pull on and a bit of a bend on. You'll probably be able to see any bites a bit better. When it's, I hate it when it's totally dead slack water. You keep reeling in, reeling in, and just laying flat all the time. You can't sort of, you never sort of register any bites. But now, now it's pulling. I'll get this baited up and cast back out again. Okay, got a bit of a predicament at the minute. I had a bite on the big rod, whether it was crabs or it tripped out again, but it felt really heavy. But the problem I've got at the minute, I'm just trying to get this rod in as well. There's quite a lot of weed, well, enough weed, clotty weed, uh, to get around the lead and all. But the tide is so fierce at the minute, I've never seen it like this. It's, it's literally pulling like an absolute train. Um, 
as soon as I get the lead or the rig up close, it's whipping it round and forth around the bay. And off the end of the pier here, it's all boarded. The, uh, the left rod got all tangled in the boarding, not the leader did. Um, managed to let a bit of slack line out, went and got my gloves. Managed to grab the leader, but <laughs> snapped up way up and lost the rig. I mean, you probably won't get the uh, ferocity of it, but I mean, that is absolutely pulling like a tank. Uh, you can see the way it's uh, flowing into the river there. So as soon as you um, get your rig close in, it just it's, it's dragging it right around the corner, and there's a load of wooden board in there, and that's where my rig got tangled. <clears throat> the leader got snagged in there, and I needed off this one as well because there's boards all the way around on this pier. I just mad, I mean, it's literally pulling the pulling the right round here, and there's boards down there. For, so many rigs. Okay, it's coming up to nine o'clock. Ty's absolutely tonking him. We're going nowhere fast at the minute. That bike, or this, the rod that was um, three up flat, but I've got three up one down. I've taken off. I'm just going to put a simple one up one down rig on, clip down rig. I've just put a big bit of uh, mackerel and squid on the bottom, I'm going to clip down. And at the top, King prawn with uh, marinade and garlic and chilli with squid. Is that a supermarket? If you've got a bigger packet, an extra 50 grams, they're all raw, but the ones that are marinated were cheaper than the plain ones, so I thought I'll get the marinated and they do two or three sort of different ones, I've got the one in garlic and chilli, so I'll give that a go. The other rod, we've got re rigged, put a new fresh shock leader on there. I'm going to put an um, up and over dropper rig, you know, sort of fixed or semi fixed, it's got a little bit of a slider on it, but there's a, there's a crimp sort of halfway. And that's got a big 4 row hook on and a, a 2 0 and that's got a great big bit of fresh mackerel and squid on that one. And what I've done is, it's one of the whole squid tails, about that big, and I just stuffed the mackerel in there. Uh, inside and put the head inside as well and hooked it and bound it on the panel rig it's a panel rig on that one 40 pound um, hook length so I've stepped it up with that one I've come round to the side that is still swinging in so I can see it it's well on the flood quite sharply but I'm going to get this one cast in and see what I might have to take this to the right by the look of it. Might have to take this one to the right if it's swinging around that much. But we'll, we'll try.
literally going to cast it parallel to the beach. If you know what I mean, the beach is down there. And we can hopefully uh, put them all there so there's a big up tide on it. Already. It's not half as deep here than it is around there. But what we'll do is um, see that one drifting. If this one drifts too much, then I will go further to the right. That's all I can do in a minute. Rather than having bouncing out, or they're not bouncing out, but they're getting a lot of pressure on it. And as I say, with the uh, bit of weed that's running, it gets jammed in the leader knot, then getting it up over this pier makes it hard work because the height of the pier and the, and the leader knot, when it gets jammed up here, the rig's down there and uh, there's no way around it and the rig just gets ripped down, if there's any boarding down there, rocks, it's straight in. Stop it for the last one. Managed to get the weed off the leader knot, put the rod tip down, wind down, and just yank it straight up and over. That's the only way to do it. So if you get a bit of fish, you add it in there. The chances of actually getting it out are going to be pretty slim, I imagine. Yeah, green. It's a lot brighter than the red, a lot brighter. But, um, and they just clip on, you've got a little, little, uh, you've got a nice little bed on it as well. It's got a little hinge. And they've got a little plastic sleeve inside, so it's not crushing the rod tip. It's quite a nice recess on that side. I was going to use them today, but already time to set up and all the rest of it happened about set, set up under, under this live station there got loads of lights underneath so it's light enough to see but we're about 280 each I, I wouldn't put them on and cast with them um, obviously because that's going to be like that and that's going to be on the underside of the rod or catch would be on the underside and I wouldn't risk that getting wrapped around all windy casting, your line getting snagged around here, snapping your rod. I'll just put this on afterwards after you cast out, peel a bit of line off quickly, clip it on and then put it back on. But even if you don't put use the line you've still got a quite an audible little bell. But they're doing three or four colours. Okay, this one's been out about 15 minutes. It's starting to pull around now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out. I put the microphone on because it's probably. Uh, I hope the earlier footage was okay. But I'll switch around. You can probably see what I mean. All right, let's have a wind down. And I'm gonna hit this hard. Hold it. I'm gonna try and get this up as fast as I can. It's, There's a lot of a bit of weed building up and as soon as that gets that's the problem. This is the problem now. You probably won't be able to see but this is now dragged right to the left. My rod tips 
fricking uh, stuck with fricking weed and I can't wind in anymore so it's probably going to be another loss rig and it's starting to really pee me off to tell you the truth because so, now that rig has gone right around the side of the fricking uh, pier That clumpy may rotty crappy stuff so okay let's pick this off well I've got the weed off but that's only be half the problem now to get it out just I think the problem as well at the end of this pier it's un there's an underhang obviously with the through the years weather tide sea just it seems a bit of an underhang on it the microphone's come off sorry just kept that back in yeah, it seems to be a bit of an underhang on the end of the pier, and uh, hopefully, obviously, hopefully not too much of an underhang because uh, <laughs> I did notice that the first sort of time I came down here, there's a really great crack that's well, been here all the time. It runs all the way around here. It just looks like the. Uh, End of the pier is going to drop off one day. <laughs> Hopefully not today, but uh, there's a big uh, fault ridge <laughs> that goes all the way around. Doesn't uh, doesn't hold uh, fill you with a lot of confidence. So I'm just now having a scratch in my plums, just wondering what to do. Might have to be five minute casts. Maybe just a simple little one up and over rig. Because um, it's absolutely tonking still. Absolutely tonking. And the chances of losing another rig are quite high. Unless I try in the uh, go over and try on this side. Because it's absolutely ripping around here. No, I think I'm going to do that and just, just see if there's anything rather than risk losing any and if it slackens once it starts to slacken up a bit that will probably come back at the end of the pier it doesn't seem to be making much of a difference even if I come round here it's still absolutely ripping round like a train just ripping around the side here um, I'm getting ragged out by it must be, must be crabs because they're all coming back like that, just not seen any bites whatsoever. So it must be plagued with crabs down there still. Probably made the wrong call again coming here, but so what I'm gonna do I think is I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll probably put a, take this hook length off. Put a smaller hook, smaller hook, single hook on, smaller hook length, go for a small bait, do a bit of a shorter hook length and just see what happens. Um, just do like a foot hook, foot 18 inch hook length, single hook, 25 pound floor max, and just uh, have quick five minute casts and just see if we can get anything. 
Okay, I've just stepped up the rig to seven ounces. I'm just going to keep it in the same spot, but what I've done, I've gone right down to 20 pound hook length. It's about two foot, just over. And I've got a size one, uh, one oh, sorry, Mustard Viking hook, just with squid. Nice bit of squid there, and a bit of the squid head. I'm going to get this cast out, check the time, give it five minute casts, and just keep recasting. Alright guys, there's no fish in that video, unfortunately, the tide was so strong, um, so what I thought I'd do is come back, I lost two or three rigs, so I'm going to uh, remake some more rigs, so I thought I'd quickly uh, run you through how I make a simple pedal, pulley pedal rig with a rotten bottom, and all I use, well I'm going to use this iCast crystal clear 70 pound mono as my rig body. So I'm just going to do about, I'm going to go too long, about four, four and a half foot. I'm going to cut that. What you're going to need is two 21 mil swivels, two 21 mil swivels, one imp or bait uh, release system. Uh, two bait holder or quick links, two 21 mil, uh, I think they're the Gemini link, link clips. And a sort of three way swivel and two hooks and for the record I'm just using 30, two 30 Mustad Viking hooks. So, start with the, uh, the rig body, which is £70. I've just tied a swivel on here, onto the end of one, one side, using a 5 turn tucked off plug knot. And the next thing you want to do, or what I do is, because I have a, a swivel on the end of my main line, I'm going to use that to connect on the Gemini link. So. You're just going to need to open one of the eyes ever so slightly just to get that eye inside the swivel. And then once you've done that, you need to bend it back straight. Just take it, gently bend it back the way it came. And then just crimp it down. Back now straight. Just make sure you're not going to crush the uh, three-way swivel. And that's, it. that's it. That's now on there. And that's going to connect. If that was a swivel on the end of my main line, I can just clip on there like that. So now I just thread thread this on. Obviously the lead's going to go on one side and the hook length on the other. Now obviously you're going to need another swivel. Because your hook link or your hook length needs to attach to this one and that's going to stop it going through. So again, I'm going to just do a five turn tucked off blood knot. So now you should have something looking like that. I'll just trim this up. Now the end that your weight and everything's going to go to you got your hook, uh, your swivel. <clears throat> now you need to attach 
your bait release system. That's it, so obviously the hook's going to go in here. And now you need to get the other 21mm swivel. And that's going to go on the bottom. And then to that swivel, you can connect your other Gemini quick link, which is going to go on there. And the reason that go on there like that is now you're going to tie your rotten bottom to the bottom eye, have about five or six inches of weak link, and then the the gripper is going to hang off the clip or off this uh, clip. That's going to hang on the end of the rod. That's going to go up to there. And now we need to attach the hook link. So the hook link, I've got exactly the same. I've got iCast, crystal clear, Japanese, high quality, pre straightened mono, monofilament. This one's £40, which is 0.55 of a mil. I'm just going to pull off about three foot. Well, off a bit more. I can always cut it down. I'm going to cut that at an angle, 45 degrees. Now this needs to go on the other side of the swivel. Now just quick, quick tie knot. That's one. Let's speed things up a bit. Okay. 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 For the purposes of the video, because you want a weak line anyway, we want it obviously to break free. So I've just got some 15 pound Fox Warrior line. Obviously, tie your line onto your wet lead. We'll get this on here. Right, you need to tie your your line onto the bottom of the Gemini within the eye of it. Again, for the purpose of the video, just going to do a couple of turns. So you get the idea, and then you can do whatever knots you want. So that's the bottom of the rig. You sit it on like that. It's going to sit like that. Now we just need to tie the hook length on. So basically the panel hook on. Your main hook. And that is your finished rig. So basically this attaches to your top of your rod, as I say. I'll try and get this so you can see it. Once you bait it up, right, let's start with the hook. So put the hook on the link clip. We get the hook, the baited hook, the imaginary baited hook, in the imp. And basically, it's all going to hang like that. That's going to your top of your rig. That's going to the top of your rig. That hangs like that. You cast out. That drops off like that. That hangs nicely in the tide. That gets washed in the tide. Like that. That's all come loose. You get your fish. That comes up. You're on your weak link. You get snagged in the sea on a rock, that just breaks free, and you get your rig back. Well, that's the rig completed. It's quite quick and simple. Hope there's a good few tips there. Um, hopefully, you know, save a bit of money getting rigs back, or if you get that 
fish of a lifetime that can help you get that fish out and you're not going to lose the whole rig, you're just going to lose the lead. And we'll, <clears throat> we'll get back out in another video, hopefully uh, the next time we'll catch a few fish, but you know, beach fishing at the minute in February in the UK, it's very tough, it's hit and miss. I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for coming along, if you liked it press like, if you want to subscribe, subscribe, it all helps. I'll see you again in another video. Alright guys, take care, cheerio.